Hello, everybody. Welcome back to yet another friend sim. It was a crazy week of Steven Universe, but there is absolutely no reason to think about Steven Universe anymore. No, nope, we're done. We're done with that. Steven Universe is over. This is not a Steven Universe blog anymore. No reason for you to think that whatsoever. <laughs> um, fun fact. Um, actually, uh, today... Um, uh, October? No, it's not October. Today... Uh, July 9th is um, Rebecca Sugar's birthday, actually. Um, it is also the, today is, specifically today is the 8th anniversary of Riska's first appearance in Homestuck. So, weird series of anniversaries to be celebrating today. Um, I am celebrating both with, of course, my pink diamond shirt, as you can see right here. Also the uh, diamond authority symbol, which I've worn on the stream on many occasions before today. Uh, but I also have this lovely, uh, Scorpio pin, which I actually picked up. I actually picked this up the same day as the uh, Pink Diamond shirt. Uh, because when I went to Hot Topic, I was like $5 short of getting like Hot Topic cash bucks or whatever. And so I just grabbed a pin off the shelf. It's great. Um, so anyway, Hive Swap. Friends him. Let's play this. Okay. Stream still says Namco High. Whoops. <laughs> I should fix that. Yes. Um, hmm. <laughs> We are not streaming Namco High anymore. Let's uh, let's change the name of this stream real quick. <laughs> B -b -b Minda plays. Oh yes, Namco High was a very fun experience. By the way, I highly recommend it if you can find it. It's kind of a dead game right now, so finding zip drives of it are a little hard to come by. Hive swap, Friendsim. Did I spell Friendsim correctly? Close enough, I believe. Uh, games categories, Hive swap. Not quite Hive Swap Act 1, but it's the only option to Twitch gives me. So there we go. And there we go. Reloading. Um, yep, reloading that. Reloading that. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Are we good? I believe we are good. Oh. Yep, and I and it unmuted the sound when I did that. But that's easily fixed. Okay. Anyway. So today we are playing. So today we are playing volume. Whoop, that's not what I wanted to do at all. This is what I wanted to do. Today we are playing volume seven of uh, the Hive Swap Friend Sim. Um, I noticed when I purchased this game that we have yet another Blue Blood. So a perfect way to celebrate Vriska's birthday with another Blue Blood. Volume seven of Business Flagrantly Illegal. Let us begin. Ever since you were a kid back on Earth, you have always held the deep, close wish to one day travel the world. You wanted to see new places, experience exciting new tastes, and, at, and altitudes and temperatures, maybe go scuba diving. <laughs> you never imagined you would actually get the chance. That kind of cool stuff doesn't happen to someone like you. Well, you're finally getting your wish. It's just a totally different world. Funny how life turns out. It is funny, isn't it? When you get back to Earth, well... You don't want to think about that. Who knows if that will even... Who knows if that will ever even happen? That's a good question. What the... Uh, yeah, like, the, our protagonist here, I wonder what the hell his deal is. Like, I know it's kind of like a thing with dating sims, that the protagonist is, like, kind of a non-entity. But, like... But seriously, though, who is this guy? How, how did he get from Earth to here? And why does he look like he should live on Prospit? You've really chilled out recently, found your place in the universe. Drifting from friend to friend, adventure to adventure. It's the only way to live. I guess you could go scuba dive on Alternia. Oh yeah, that, that, it would just be a perfectly bad idea. True, but it would be a great way to meet some of the uh, Aqua Trolls. Um, I don't know how else you even would go about meeting Aqua Trolls, for that matter. Confuse the Sea Dwellers, yes. Bismuth flagrantly illegal legal Friska. Alright, and so we've got our Blue Blood, who we will of course be starting with. She's got a funky eye, even by Blue Blood standards. Uh, Ramale, Ramali Namek. <laughs> Namek. <laughs> Welcome to Namek. And uh, Conil, Conil, Conil Oma, who kind of looks, who's kind of giving me a Jasper vibe right here. Like, 
if Nepeta is like the lith, you know, agile fighter, Kanyel is just like the Jasper Tiger style cat. But we're starting with the blue blood. Ramel. Ramale. Ramale? Ramel. Whichever. You have wandered into a part of town that seems to have some culture going on. There are a lot of bright neon lights, and you can't read what the signs say. But you can see arcades, a performance space, and what looks like a movie theater. Perhaps more indie-oriented compared to the mall cinemas you've seen before. As you continue, as you continue wandering, you come across a trendy-looking building with a placard outside that, side that shows a little cartoon doodle of a fancy waiter holding out trays of snacks. You can't read the what the words say. But you recognize the intergalactic sing signal for free food inside. Come on in. Oh, this is an interesting. Uh, I see at least two purple bloods here, so that's I'm a, I'm immediately concerned. <laughs> um, you head inside, and it appears to be an art gallery. It must be opening night, because there are festive decorations up in a little table offering drinks and hors d'oeuvres. Once again, we got troll versions of famous pieces of artwork. Which is always a kind of a fun little thing. Anyway. There are many other art appreciators here, and most of your and your adrenaline spikes when you realize that most of the trolls milling about are purple bloods. Oh good Ha! He has learned. <laughs> Fucking juggle a Mona Lisa. Yeah, that's a little thing. Oh yeah, the ceiling's nice with all the balloons. Ugh. You're not sure. You're not sure if some paintings and snacks are worth the high chance of being maimed when with cha when chaotic violence breaks out. But you're debating the merits of free food versus probable injury. But as you're debating the merits of free food versus probable injury, someone approaches you. Romale. Wonder if that last e is silent. I can't. I can't tell. So I keep going back and forth whether to pronounce it uh, Romale or Romale. Oh, you don't look like my other patrons. Are you lost? Or are you perhaps looking to start collecting? If you're low, if you're loaded, ignore that first question. Art is for everyone, after all, regardless of your blood color. The four black pupils in her eye glint and sparkle, and you're not sure if it's a menacing or a friendly sparkle. She grins at you and shows all of her teeth. So, what do you think of the art? Have any paintings caught your eye? Uh, the fact that she keeps adding ease to the end of her words makes me think that. Um, that that last E on her name is silent, since I've been debating that very topic. You look around. You don't know much about art, but you're but you are a nerd, and a lot of the paintings in here remind you of scenes from popular movies and games back home. Let's see. <laughs> the artwork is stunning, perhaps the best I've ever seen. Troll Mona Lisa, who? It seems kind of derivative. Um, there's always a chance that she's just going to like agree with this one. <laughs> But I do think it's the wrong answer, so <laughs> so I'm going to go with this and try to get the quick game over. <laughs> you clearly know nothing about art, pleb. If you don't like it, there's the door. Make room for someone with money to burn and better taste. Pet cha cha, go away. Oh, should I should have saved before that. Oh well, I can just speed through it. Go go away. <laughs> well, I can just speed through the dialogue to get back there. <laughs> Whoops, that's not the right one. Uh, uh, technical difficulties. Well, not technical difficulties, just me being an idiot. <laughs> This artwork is stunning, perhaps the best I've ever seen. The troll of Mona Lisa who? <laughs> Stop, you flatterer. She puts a hand on her hip and winks at you, and you're guessing here that she doesn't actually want you to stop. You're also making the connection that she must be the artist who painted all of these. You sense an opportunity for friendship, so you lay it on thick and gush about how talented she is. thought you looked like a dumbass when you walk in, but you have good taste after all. <laughs> I get that all the time. Let me show you around. 
You follow Ramel through the art, through the gallery, swinging by the table with the free food first. It's pretty good by the standards you've come to expect on Alternia. But what, but what you thought was wine at first glance is actually Fago. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> of course it's Fago. Ugh. I've talked about this before, but like, it's weird to me that like, because like where I live, Fago is everywhere. It is like just kind of like the baseline brand name soda. So like, it, like every department store or grocery store you go into, they will have Coke, Pepsi, and Fago. <laughs> and whatever, like, the store brand is, you know, like, Pick and Saves, you know, Whole Foods brand, you know, off-brand soda. And so it's weird to me, people are like, you have drunk, you have drunk the magical elixir? You have partaken of the, you have partaken of the Holy Purple Bloods beverage? It's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's cheap, too, so I usually get it instead of regular soda, because I don't... I don't even get soda all that often, but I usually get Fago, because it's, like, half as expensive as Coke. Anyway, moving on. You may have noticed some themes in my, in my exhibited work. I don't love clowns or gore as much as it may seem. That's just what I have, to, that's just what I have for sale here. If you, work, if you look at my work online, you'll see a, a, more, a more full range of my art. Oh, yeah, she's... So she's appealing to uh, the target demographic. That's that's smart. That's how you do it. It's like, I know all sorts of artists who, like, you see them at anime conventions and they bring all of their nerdy shit, you know, all the Legend of Zelda fan art and stuff. But then you go on the Etsy and that's where you find the good shit. <laughs> you know, the custom stuff. The That's where you find, like, their their homegrown OCs and stuff. That's, you know, always do that. Support your artists. It's good to do that. But for all this fancy gallery shit, Purple Bloods are some of my best customers. These clowns fucking love art. They're rich as fuck and they'll buy anything as long as it's violent enough or features religious themes. <laughs> Again, that's how you do it. <laughs> just tra just do that with cons. Sell out. That's the way to become an artist, folks. Sell out. <laughs> You've seen the kind of destruction and mayhem that Purple Bloods are capable of, so you're surprised that she doesn't seem to mind being in a crowded gallery with so many of them. Most other trolls you've interacted with have done their best to steer clear of the clown murder cult guys. At least when one of those hate, at least one of those hate romance relationships isn't on the table. Isn't it kind of dangerous to actively court them for her audience? Oh sure, they can be unpredictable, and keeping them happy requires some smoozing. Occasionally, I have to pretend like I've drunk the fago and pull some religious references out of my ass. But it's nothing I can't handle. You can make a lot more money as an artist if you're not cheap, choosy about what you draw. Yep. <laughs> like I say, sell out. It's... One of my customers is this blue blood moron who only ever commissions me to draw low bloods in quadrants with other low bloods. I've got him convinced I'm giving him a deal at his rate when he's actually paying me five times what I charge anyone else. <laughs> oh, it's... I know a lot of artists, and so this is all sounding very, very familiar. <laughs> My point is, artistic integrity is for chumps. If you want to get ahead of this, in this world, give the people what they want first. I... Okay, I'm way ahead of you on this, sister. That strikes you as a depressing lookout on the creative process, but you're aware by now that idealism on Alternia tends to lead to shorter lifespans. And you have to admit, looking around at the cloud in this gallery, that her cynical approach seems to be working. You tell her that she sounds pretty business savvy in addition to talented, and she winks at you again. Thanks, I know. Because I make bank doing shit like this, I'm able to fund my passion projects. You should really check out my webcomic. Yep, see, there you go. It's like, you go to the convention, you buy your Pokemon fan art, and then you go onto their website and you read their webcomic, and, and oftentimes it's a great webcomic that deserves your attention. Support your artists. <laughs> But before, she, but before you can find out what her webcomic is about, she notices another troll that has been sidling up to you. As she approaches, she whips out what looks like a small recording device with a smile. Hmm? Ramal's face goes carefully blank and she crosses her arms over her chest. We have a, we have a uh, reporter troll, apparently. Hmm. And how can I help you? Journo. <laughs> Are we actually going to see Journo? 
Apparently not, since they're not on screen right now. Ah, yes, hello there, Miss Namek. 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 And with Alternia Knightley, and uh, I'm with Alternia Knightley, and I must say, it looks like your first ever gallery exhibit has been a smashing success so far. The journalist's syrupy tone and innocuous words don't seem threatening to you, but you're picking up some tense vibes from, from Omel, whose hair ribbon swings forward in front of her, fa her, of, in front of her face aggressively. Of course it's a success. I never expected otherwise. The journal is a 6 and 8 letter name. Nice. Yes, indeed it is. Mm-hmm. Maybe not, but some in the art world would have expressed surprise at the timing of this. Some have called it bold, considering that you're currently in the middle of a plagiarism controversy. Oh, no. Would you care to comment on the case against you made by uh, Trident Media? Oh, dear. Instead of being caught off guard by the by the question sprung on her, Romel relaxes and laughs. Oh, that. Pff, as if they have any kind of real evidence that I'm violating their precious intellectual property. All the characters I draw and profit from are entirely original, and Trident Media and their legislator are just mad about it because the whole internet knows that my storylines are better than the source material. Whoop! I mean, better than the unrelated creative works that my comics book happen to be happen to bear a superficial resemblance to. Feel free to quote me on that. Ah, so she's a fan artist, eh? The reporter takes the quote and scuttles away. Ramel seems unbothered, but you can't help but feel concerned for her. For her. Copyright Fritchman is serious business. Is your new friend in legal hot water? Nah, Alternia barely has any copyright protections to speak of. It's just that the little ups it's just that little pest Gorjack trying to stir up shit as usual. Hey, there's a familiar name. The company behind his lawsuit wouldn't even care if he if he hadn't gotten involved. It's no big deal. Nothing I can't handle. You go back to following her around the gallery, keeping your distance whenever a purple plug comes up to compliment her on her art. Wise move. You can tell that despite her confident attitude, Ramal is still thinking about that journalist. She taps her foot and frowns at the paintings whenever there's a lull in conversation, throwing glances at the door that the journalist left through. You know it's not like Alternia has a free press or credible newspapers. That reporter was probably hired by someone with a grudge to dig up dirt on me. I don't think it was Gorjak. Actually, I don't think it was Gorjak, actually. Too obvious. Amateurish. Um, I don't know. I've met I, I've met Gorjak. <laughs> I wouldn't be so sure about that. No, this stinks of my competition. The artistic establishments here thinks that thinks all I do is fan art and shouldn't be taken seriously as an artist. All of their paintings are in the museum across the street, and they hate that I've managed to pull up my own exhibit. Those stuck-up pretentious bubs, and bold scrubs, have been trying to sabotage me for so long. She turns to you, her hands balled up into fists and the X in her eye flashing with passion. I've been waiting for the opportunity to strike back at them. If anyone is going to accuse me of being a thief and a hack anyway, I might as well steal from them for real. Oh, this sounds like it's going to be fun. But their security is airtight. I haven't had an accomplice until now. Oh my god. <laughs> We're going to do an art heist? Is that what this is going to be? Sounds awesome. What do you say? Want to help me pull off a risky art heist? Yes! Yes, I do! <laughs> oh, there is only... There is only one correct answer. I'm going to save anyway because, you know, because I forgot to before. Um, But there is one and only one correct answer to this question. Yes, Fuck yes. Hell. Fucking. Yes. <laughs> Ramala. Ramala does one, does one last round of her exhibit, saying goodbye to her patrons and grabbing her bag, which seems to be mostly art supplies, as we head out the door and into the street. What is it with Cobalt Bloods and giving you choices that aren't actually choices? <laughs> I mean, who knows? I mean... Maybe that was a subtle bit of mind control. She is a per she is a blue blood. I mean, <laughs> that's what that could have been. <laughs> uh, the museum that she wants to rob is at the end of the block, and block in a much bigger, fancier building than the one you just walked out of. All the lights are off outside, inside, and it doesn't have any signs advertising current exhibits. Hmm. We can do this one of two ways: follow that journalist and steal the keys, uh, keys if she has them, or break in without them. Huh. 
Let's see. Also gonna be, I'm also gonna be like, at the end of this, I'm gonna go back and see if there actually are different outcomes to picking yes or fuck yes. I kind of doubt it, but it would be funny if there were. Uh, let's see, steal the keys or bust down the door. Um, the smart way to do it, stealing the keys is probably the smart way to do it. You know, less, uh, you know, less uh, risky. Like, busting down the door is absolutely going to set off security. So that's what we're going to do, because you only live once, unless it's a video game, then you can just reset the game. A heist sounds risky enough without spending extra time trying to pickpocket some keys. You suggest that this that if this crime is going to happen tonight, it should happen now. No time like the present. Good point. Let's go break into a museum. You scoot casually across the street. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> You scoot casually across the street to the museum on the corner. After seeing the, ki the kind of looks you, your unusual appearance draws from passerby, Armal takes some fabric from her bag and wraps it around your head. There. Now people will probably just assume that you have horns. You're just embarrassed by them being tiny or malformed. Duck into, that alcove shielding the, duck into that alcove shielding the museum's back door and wait for me. I'm going to circle the block first, just, to, just so we seem less suspicious. As you wait for a remail by the door, the reality of this caper settles in. You've been excited about this heist at first, because who want, wouldn't be excited by the opportunity to sneak around, steal some art, and stick it to the man? Probably while a snazzy soundtrack plays. This is a snazzy soundtrack, by the way. Let's just pause and listen to it for a second. Like I said, snazzy. But now you realize that in heist movies, they always have blueprints for the place they're going to rob. And you have no blueprints. It seems like a dire sign. It is a sign that this is a very poorly thought out heist. I will agree with you there. Before you can get before you can get too swept up in your worries, Romel returns. Does she have any idea how to get into this place? Because the door looks pretty unbust downable to you. Yeah, I've got some tricks up my sleeve. Atta girl. I've never done this before, but it'll probably work. She roots through her bag until she comes up with uh, comes out with several paint brushes of varying sizes, then crouches down and uses the skinniest one as a lockpick. Uh, for a second there, I thought she was going to pull out the um, what was her name? Like the the magic paintbrush from uh, Problem Sleuth. <laughs> it doesn't work, but then she selects a different paintbrush with different bristles and uses some of the bristles bunched together, and the lock clicks open. Ha! I'm great at this. I would, but I could be an incredible thief if I decide to go that do go do that instead of art. Hmm. Well, I mean, I can tell you, I can tell you of at least one uh, very good uh, blue bud thief. Like they, there's, there's a certain aptitude for it <laughs> within your blood cast. Do you ever take the time to just sit back and acknowledge how great you are at everything you try to do and how much you trust yourself to never fuck up when it counts? <laughs> um, you hope that the question is rhetorical because your honest answer is that no, you don't have a whole lot of experience acknowledging how great you are at everything you attempt. <laughs> your mental acknowledgments lately have mostly been the opposite of that. Maybe it wasn't rhetorical because Ramal says crouch down like that, like that for a second, looking at you like she wants an answer. When you eventually come up with an awkward shrug, she stands up and puts away her makeshift lockpit, dusting off her hands and opening the door. Uh, it's a little hot tonight. Actual Vriska, actual Vriska. <laughs> I guess not everyone can be at my confidence level. <laughs> this is also a very uh, blue blood trait right there. Anyway, let's go. You follow her inside. Much to your delight, uh, you see that this museum has an infrared laser beam alert system. <laughs> it looks so cool, just like in the movies. And you're back to being excited. Ramal seems into it too, bouncing the balls of her feet next to her. Okay, so yeah, this girl is definitely a thief at heart. Oh, look, uh, a, uh, in the background there. In the background there, there's a, uh, very, uh, Silence of the Lambs, uh, movie poster reference. Um, it's some kind of giant Lucius Maw thing. And. Yeah, the the true troll is in the back. It's like you can't see my mouse, so this is a little annoying trying to point out what I'm looking at. But like, 
the painting to the left with the two troll faces, that's clearly a reference to something, I just don't know what. Anyway. It looks so cool, just like in the movies. And you're back to being excited. Ramal seems into it too, bouncing the balls of her feet next to you. Interesting. Very interesting. One of us is going to have to get through those beams to disable the alarm. The box to do it is across the room there, see? But the lasers are so close together. You can see the issue. Ramal isn't that tall for a troll, but she might be too, troll to too tall to maneuver through the beams. Even if she bends over, it's going to be tricky for her to squirm through them all without losing her balance and tripping the alarm. But the trolls designed this alarm system didn't have your hornless ass in mind when they thought of potential intruders. You stoop over a bit to see if you'll fit, and sure enough, yes, you should be able to shimmy your way through those beams with minimal contortion. Fuck yeah! I knew I was right to bring an accomplice. Great thinking, me. And great high skills you if you pull this off. You recall what she said about confidence and trusting yourself to not fuck up, <laughs> to not fuck things up, and assure her that you've got this. You've got this. We've got this together. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just going to be singing My Little Pony songs through this uh, Homestuck Let's Play. You face the laser beams with your self-doubt shoved all the way down, where it hopefully won't screw anything up for you. You take a deep breath and crouch down carefully, so carefully, inch your way forward between the wires. It's the slowest you've ever crossed a room in your life, and there are a couple moments when you teeter and almost lose your balance. You can hear Ramallah hissing through her teeth behind you at tense moments, but you press on without looking back. And then you've done it! You've reached the box to disable the alarm system, and you... have no idea how you're going to do that. All the buttons are labeled in alien alphabet. Crap. Oh, that's right, I forgot you can't read. <laughs> press the one that looks like, um... a meat hook but with angry eyes. And then press the one that looks like a meat hook but it's got... Got, but it's got Purby's claws. That should do it. That sounds bonkers to you, but you look back at the buttons, and her descriptions of the letters are actually pretty spot on. <laughs> you press the angry eyes and the cat claws, and the whole alarm system makes a soft shuddering noise and clicks and shuts off. You're thrilled. You did it! Who knew that, that doing something right could give you such a rush? This is just like the part of the heist where the heroes had to sweat for a minute, but then defeated the unforeseen wrench in their plans. You are certain that there couldn't possibly be any larger wrenches in your plans still to come. <laughs> Ramal, crosses, Ramal crosses the room to join you, giving you an appraising look with her hands on her hips. Not bad. Thanks for coming through for me like that. Now let's get what we came here for. There's one work in particular that I'm here to get. You follow her through the different galleries, pressing through, pre passing through sculpture rooms and oil, and oil paintings until you reach a display of pieces that look inspired by pop culture. The paintings and prints in here remind you a lot of Ramal's exhibit, and you look at her to and, and when you look at her you can see that she's rigid, her eyes flashing a passionate blue tint on her cheek. I can't believe they called me the hacks. Such bullshit. Whatever, it's cool. It doesn't actually bother me. <laughs> I just need to send the message that you don't want to fuck with me. This painting right here is a direct ripoff of one of my earlier works, back when I was naive enough to put my art up for free, without realizing it would just get copied and someone else would take all the credit and the profit. Well, I learned my lesson. I'll take this so they can't sell it, rip off their rip-offs, make something even better, and turn it over for a truckload of cash. <laughs> and she grabbed the, uh, grabbed the Science of the Lambs painting. She grabs the painting, and just when you two, the two of you are ready, the heist roll... Bleh, and just when the two of you are ready to heist roll out of here, you hear voices at the back door. And what sounds like a, secure, a team of security guards coming in. They must have arised, arrived to investigate the alarm system shutting down. Oh, no. You're ready to embrace your panic, but you stop hyperventing when you feel Ramal's vice-like claw grip on your arm. Don't freak out. Follow my lead and we can get out of this. You assume that the whole heist is off now that security has shown up, but to your surprise, Ramal doesn't put the stolen painting back on the wall. She gives your arm... Oh, look, it is actually... Hang on. It is, she is actually holding it. I just didn't know this because of the uh, text boxes. <laughs> the... the, the, the Is Gamzy? What the fuck? <laughs> what the what the shit? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, and the face is crying red. Is this is this Carcat and Gamzy? What the? 
how? <laughs> how is this? How is this real? How is this happening? <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> okay then uh well that's that's your lesson for tonight folks always remember to uh, remove the text box <laughs> oh oh god that was funny i did not expect to see that <laughs> she gives your arm one last reassuring squeeze before you saunter out of the room with her head held high moseying with no hurry towards the front door you follow her nonchalant lead as best you can. When one of the security guards stops her, Ramal gives her him a condescending, slightly confused look. What are you even doing here? My assistant told me she informed all staff that I would be swinging by today to pick this up. Did you miss the memo? Give me a break. I'm sure it must be easy to give me a break. I'm sure it must be easy to miss things, right? Because as a security guard, you probably get so much more important correspondence every day. Her four pupils somehow give you give her sneering eye roll extra sarcastic force. She yawns and with her face hand and, her, and with her free hand not holding the painting, flicks some non-existent dirt off her shoulder. Uh, the security troll, a burgundy blood judging from the sign on his cop hat, looks uncertain and embarrassed. But I get it. I understand crossed wires. Since you're apparently too busy to do your job right, I'll catch you up to speed. I'm the artist behind this piece. And I've got a wealthy patron interested in commissioning something similar. I'm taking this as a reference in order to negotiate a better deal. There is absolutely no way these guys will buy her story. The two of you look so guilty and you still have her yellow sash wrapped around her around your head, probably looking like an idiot with a head injury. But Ramallah is staring down this guard like it hasn't even occurred to her that she might be questioned. You've never seen someone double, double down so hard on a story that is such transparent bullshit. Um... <laughs> No politics. Not get, not gonna get into politics. <laughs> if you want to waste more time and if you want if you want to waste more of my time and yours by calling your superior to verify, go ahead. He might not be thrilled by he might not be thrilled by this mix-up happening because you can't keep up with your emails though. The security troll was already wavering, and at the mention of his emails, he cringes. His co-workers behind him shuffle around, muttering to each other. He steps back, horns lowered in embarrassment, and waves you and Ramal through with a with a mumbled apology. You can't believe this is happening, but the two of you swagger out to the street through the front door, legitimate as anything. Da 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 da. Ugh. that burgundy is so dead. <laughs> Probably, yeah. You don't stop until you've turned the corner to the next block, and then Ramal leans against the wall and laughs, holding her painting happily to her chest. Ha! <laughs> Suckers! <laughs> Feels good to get away with things, doesn't it? <laughs> Definitely a blue blood. <laughs> it does feel good, you suppose. Mostly you think you're still... Mostly you think you're still reeling. How did you come up with a story like that on the fly? How did you guess correctly that the security guard wasn't some hyper-organized inbox zero kind of guy who's never believed that he could have missed the message? Who'd never believed that he could have missed the message? Psychic powers, dude. Ma gives you an odd look and reaches forward to unwind her sash from around your head and stuff it in her bag. I just winged it, man. You overthink things. My guesses are usually right because I'm a creative genius. But if you're going after him for emails, it, but if going after him for emails hadn't worked, meh. My guess we would have. My guess we would have been arrested, and then I'd talk my way out of that eventually too. You find it hard to believe that she goes through life so easily with that kind of unshakable belief that she can prove through that she can improvise through anything. Now I know that she, her sign does not um, mean that she is a light player, but she does have startlingly good luck. I know she's not a luck player because I have that sign. I know it, I know I know the two luck signs intimately. Doesn't she worry that it'll catch up with her someday? You want the long answer? It's this. Nope, I super don't. <laughs> I like her. Well, I mean, of course, I like her. It's me. Huh? 
And if you still don't get it, I don't know, it's the kind of thing you can really, you can't really, you, I don't know if it's the kind of thing you can really learn. She picks up the painting again, looking down the street and away from you. Well, that was a successful heist. Now that I've ruined the competition, I feel inspired. I'm going to take this home and paint. Wait, hang on. With a sinking feeling, you realize that she's getting ready to depart, and that this friendship might have slipped through your fingers. Sorry, kid. You seem like you're not totally useless, at least. But I'm not one for long-term artistic collaboration. It's a lot easier to talk your way out of tight spots when you're on your own. Peace. So, you watch her go, your shoulders sagging with disappointment. You guys stole, a muse stole from a museum together, escaped together, bamboozled the cops together. You should have bonded over your shared transgressions and culpability. Every crime movie you've ever seen has taught you that heists bring people closer together, but cat, get off of my mouse. Cultural differences? Huh. Game. <laughs> that was the bad ending? I guess. Alright. <laughs> Sure, I guess. <laughs> um, hmm. Interesting. Well, I mean, that was fun, even if it was technically the bad ending. Uh, before we go back uh, to where I think the actual... Uh, let's see, I think that this save point here is the actual, uh, like, failure point. <laughs> that went very well for a bad ending. Yeah, yeah, it did. Before we go back to here, I actually do want to check out this yes, fuck yes uh, thing to see if anything changes. Now there's one last round. It does not seem to, yeah, and it does not matter whether you say yes, fuck yes, or hell fucking like yes. But there, that does not mean, just because all three answers do the same thing does not mean one of them isn't correct. Remember that shit? There is one correct answer there. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so we're going to try to steal some keys. <laughs> You would much rather walk through, it, walk, walk through an unlocked door than try to bust it down, and the reporter is still in sight, turning a corner down the street. You try to imitate Ramal's casual, like, confident way of, wa of walking, like she could blend in anywhere and pull off anything. But despite your efforts to not attract suspicion, you keep getting looks. Not being the same species as everyone around you tends to make you stand out. Shit, this could be a problem. I can put together a disguise for you. Hang on. Um... So you're trying to remember one of the other bad endings that didn't go so badly. Um, yeah, Polypuzz didn't go terribly. I mean, like, everybody everybody made it out of the Polypuff failure ending okay. It just, you know, didn't get a friendship out of it. You watch as she starts pulling things from her bag. She seems to have all sorts of things in there, from paintbrushes to blobs of clay to paint. And you think she might be putting together some fake horns for you from scratch real quick? Before she can finish, you realize that one of the purple bloods about to walk into Ramal's gallery is staring at you. Oh no. He looks vaguely familiar, and you realize a little too late that you've met before when he, when he starts walking towards you. Oh no. You. I remember you. You bro- What? <laughs> you broke into my apartment. <laughs> we were just talking about this. <laughs> It's the same troll that you and Polypod escaped from. But that was that was the bad ending. That was non-canon. <laughs> we... So, we... Okay, well... Alright. It's the same troll you and Polypod escaped from. You back away as he advances, a lazy grin on his face. Ramal glances from him to you and back to him again. Well, fuck. Looks like I'm not going to have an accomplice in it after all. Cat. Sorry, pal. Whoop. <laughs> Yoink. She hoists her bag over her shoulder and shrugs her hands in a, What can you do, Jester? Then she's gone. <laughs> the big purple blood paying her no mind as she absconds. You want to feel betrayed, but it's hard to blame her considering how scary this guy is. In your heart, you know that you're dead already. <laughs> but you're not going to accept your fate without attempting to prevent it. Purple, incidentally, is a valid troll name. <laughs> You might. Whoops. Uh, but, but. You make a mad dash to escape, sprinting towards a skinny alleyway and thinking that maybe you can scamper up a fire escape or something. Unfortunately, your attacker size doesn't seem to slow him down, and you can hear this he his heavy hoot footfalls right behind you. He laughs, and it somehow sounds dopey and dumb and completely terrifying at the same time. That's a purple blood, alright. <laughs> 
you make it into the alley. But, hey, this is the same. This is the same alley from the uh, what, what, what were their names? The two gold, uh, the gold bloods. Yeah, them. <laughs> you make it into the alley, but you uh, but you fucked up because it's a dead end and you don't see anywhere you could clamber to high enough uh, to higher higher ground. You turn to face him, hopelessness hopelessness sinking down to your toes. Your scrappy alien tenure on this ha hazardous new planet is about to come to a messy end. The purple blood springs, swings his massive club lazily in one hand as he approaches you, not bothering to run anymore. You drop into a fighting crouch, trying to think back to your third grade karate lessons for any moves that might be helpful. But before you can, cr you can crush your skull and you see a flash of movement behind him. The f yeah, the devs won't tell us which endings are canon, so it's kind of whatever. Yeah, it does seem to be the case. He staggers, dropping the club as something hits him from behind. As much as I appreciate inspiring my fans, I'm going to have to ask you not to inter interpret my heart art so literally. As in, no murdering. <laughs> Armal springs off the troll's back before claw after clawing him and rolls to the side, avoiding his swinging fist. Holy shit. She grabs for his club, which is almost as long as she is tall, but before she can, but before she can use it, his... Next blow catches her below the rib cage, and you're flying across the alley and into the brick wall. She's on her feet. She's on her feet again fast, but you can tell that she's injured, and now she doesn't have the element of surprise on her side. The purple blood turns his back to you as he closes in on Ramal, laughing again. You can't let him kill her. Not when she came back for you, but you have no idea how you can help here. Your eyes land in Ramal's bag, tossed to the side in the melee, and in desperation you grab a loose paintbrush that rolled out of it. Yeah, just somebody just joined, but we're guessing the conversation is about Polypa's bad ending apparently being canon here. Yes, yes indeed, that is the uh, that is the point of discussion. It's a little weird. Ba -ba, paintbrush roll out of it. You die for with a battle cry and stab the end of the paintbrush deep into the high blood's calf. Violet blood squirts on you, squirts you in the face. He yells and you manage to roll away just in time to avoid getting smacked. The slight stab room hasn't slowed him down much, but it's given Ramal a chance to dive out of. Excuse me. Oh, and, we, and, the, and the screen is splattered with purple blood. Nice. Uh, uh, Give him a chance to dive out of his range. And while he's still trying to grab you, he gets a hold. Grab you. He should get a hold of his club again. <laughs> Holy shit! She's stronger than she looks. Strong enough to get a good wind up with that thing. And when and when he turns towards her, she brings it down hard onto his skull. Holy shit! <laughs> that's a, that's an anime weapon right there. The way she uses it. Nice. <laughs> oh, she ain't, she ain't stopping. <laughs> it takes a few more good smacks before the troll finally groans and twi before it's finally the, the, the troll finally stops groaning and twitching. Ramal breathes heavily, wiping blood splatter off her forehead. You look up, meeting her eyes. Attorney is a very colorful death planet. <laughs> no murdering, she says. <laughs> uh Wow. Uh, I, I love Blue Bloods, man. They're great. <laughs> she looks up me in your eyes. You're absolutely positive that this is the most dramatic way you could have ever been rescued. You can't believe she came back and risked her life for you. <laughs> Don't mention it. I needed an accomplice, right? Accomplice, right? Right? Whoop. Uh-oh. She drops the club and staggers over to you, pausing to spit out cerulean blood. You remember that she took some damage and hurried to support her, offering her your weak human arm to lean on. Is she going to be okay? I'll be fine. Ceruleans are tough to cull, even for a wannabe subjugulator. Subjugulator? She tilts her head, looking down at the way her blood swirls with larger quantities of purple blood pooling on the asphalt. Huh. That's actually not bad as an artistic medium. The colors and textures work well together. Maybe that blue blood kid from Chitter is on to something. Uh, is she talking about Aradia? I mean, Aradia does seem like the type who would be on Chitter. Or, or not Aradia. Um, Ardata? That's what I meant. Ardata. Anyway, thanks for having my back with that paintbrush. That took some quick thinking. We make an okay team. I've never killed anyone before, but that kind of but that kind of rule didn't it? Oh yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You're not sure what you would. 
You're not sure that you would choose those exact words, but you're pretty relieved right now. You might not have the bloodthirsty glint in your eyes that Ramal does, but maybe you can interpret. But maybe you can interpret your adrenaline shakes as you fork overload or something. Hell yeah, me too. I can see why people get so into kill into this killing business. If I wasn't such a great artist, I'd consider switching careers. <laughs> uh. But sometimes when you're good at too many things, you have to pick one and stick to it. So no professional assassinations for me. I'm still determined to rob the shit out of my competitors, though. And you, now that we've killed someone together, it just makes sense for us to stay partners in crime, right? <laughs> Your heart leaps at the implication that she wants to stick together. You truly do not mind breaking every law in the books if it means you'll she'll be your friend. Nice. We probably don't need to go around breaking every law. I just want to steal some art. But maybe we can reschedule that heist for another day. This neighborhood will be crawling with drones as soon as they realize a high blood was killed. You feel bad about this troll attempting to slaughter your wound gun. <laughs> about this troll. About the. You feel bad that this troll attempted to slaughter you ruined Ramal's gallery opening. Oh, are you kidding? My customer base loves this kind of shit. My art will get even more of a, vi of a violent reputation when word gets around that someone died at my first gallery show. That's metal as fuck. <laughs> sell out. Always sell out. You limp out of the alley, supporting Ramal with your head, with your with your arm around her waist, and she directs you to the back entrance of her gallery of her gallery, where the two of you clean off the blood and hide until the drones in the crowds are gone. If you don't mind, you can lay low at my place for a few days while we plan this heist. And I might as well get some work done while we wait while we wait and scheme. That fight was pretty inspiring. You're already my accomplice, so how would you feel about also being my muse? <laughs> Victory! <laughs> and we managed to kill a purple blood in the uh in the process. <laughs> More blood! <laughs> Do you see it? See that in the corner? It, it's lo lower right-hand corner. More blood. <laughs> blood for the blood artists. All right. Um, somebody hit me up with... Um, somebody hit me up with uh, Ramal's sign before we head out of here. MSPA me reader becomes a muse once again for a blue blood instead of an indigo blood this time. I seem to recall Ramesia was an indigo blood, technically, not a, per not a blue blood. Um... Yeah, artists love MSPA reader. So let's see, how many of these different routes have... How many of the victorious routes have ended in death now? Because there was this one, um, uh, Applejack's uh, victory, um... Applejack's uh, victory route also ended in murder because she uh, had to kill those poachers. Um, now let's see, what is... What is that sign? Name that sign. Uh, oh, here we are. Um, uh, Scorgo. Uh, she uh, pro a sign of pros uh, sign of the Crusader. Um, she is aligned with Prospect and space. So that's all very interesting. All right. Um, sex now. Okay. So, I'm going to take a quick break, uh, get myself some new water, and then we will move on to the next and final route for the night. See you. See you in a moment. One second. Bye-bye. And recording stopped.